Hey, it's Von Barron here at Jazz Drum School. Thanks so much for being on my email list. And here is your free monthly drum lesson. One of the hardest things to tackle in jazz drumming is the whole concept of comping. And even more difficult than that is being able to comp and play a comping pattern or a comping groove and play a drum fill and then come back to it. So what I'm gonna do in this lesson is help you tackle that now. So first I'm gonna introduce you to a groove, a comping pattern that comes from my jazz drum comping mini course. And this is a really fun one and a really, I think a really easy one to get under your belt. So let's go ahead and work on it and we're gonna break it down one count at a time out of time as we do everything at jazzdrumschool.com. So you can see on your screen that there are counts written above each of those notes. Now you can download this PDF at Jazz Drum School. I'll be sure to put the link below in the description so you can go check it out. Uh, now, first count, count one, we have ride symbol. And of one, we have nothing. The ah uh of one, now remember we're counting in triplets. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Uh, and in the ah uh of one, we have nothing. Count two, we have a ride symbol hi-hat. The and of two, we have nothing. It's just a rest. The ah uh of two, we have a ride symbol and snare drum. Count three, we have a ride symbol. On the and of three, we have a snare drum. The ah uh of three, we have a snare drum. Count four, we have a ride symbol and hi-hat. Then we have a snare drum on the and of four. And the ah uh of four, we have a ride symbol and bass drum. Now what you wanna do is take it one count at a time out of time. It is absolutely positively the fastest way for your brain to learn anything you wanna teach it, okay? A lot of drummers, myself included in the beginning, made the mistake of just trying to, okay, I'll just get the ride cymbal and the hi-hat going and then I'll throw in the snare drum or I'll throw in the bass drum or I'll just try it all at the same time. It doesn't work. So this works the best of anything. This is absolutely the fastest way to learn to play drums. So trust me on this, stick it out, don't worry, because eventually what's gonna happen, is pretty, pretty quickly actually, is tempo is slowly gonna creep into your playing. All right, so that's our groove. That's what we're gonna use as our groove, all right? Uh, let's go ahead and play it. I'm gonna play it at 120 BPM, but I'm gonna set the metronome to 60 BPM. What that's gonna do is allow me to use the click on counts two and four. So instead of, like traditionally, the way we'd use a metronome where we go click, 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 you know, and there, every click is a quarter note or a beat in that measure, I'm actually just gonna here are two clicks per measure, and I'm gonna assign those clicks to counts two and four. Don't worry, you'll hear it. All right, ready? Check it out. One, two, one, a two, a three, four. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I did a little accent there on that first snare note on the ah uh, of two. One, one, two, one. Right? Okay? So that's a really effective way to kind of give you a little bit of shape to that phrase so that not all the notes are the same volume. You could play them all really soft, Normally, you wouldn't play them all loud because that would just be kind of overkill, really. But you could, you could try that. Try accenting different parts of it. Don't accent every note. Accent different notes and leave the other notes as ghosted notes. That's a really effective way to add shape to your comping. All right, so now that you know what you're going to play is your foundation, your kind of groove here, what we want to do is work on the sticking pattern for the drum fill. Now, the sticking pattern is pretty easy. All it is is six notes, and I've got it written on the screen for you. It's also included uh, in the PDF, so you can, you can check it out there as well. But it's really not complicated. It doesn't need to be complicated. And what we're doing is keeping it simple with six notes because we're already playing in triplet land. We're already playing triplets on the drum set. So what we're gonna do with our groove. So what we're gonna do is keep our drum fill in that same vein, in that same grid, and give us a lot of flow. All right, so let's learn the drum fill now. So the sticking pattern, first off, just goes like this. Right, left, right, left, left, kick. All right? Really 
pretty simple. You've probably maybe even seen this before. Okay, just like that. You can put an accent on the first note if you want. That's nice. It has a nice, nice feel to it. Uh, you can put accents wherever you want, in fact. But um, it's up to you. But that's the basic idea. Now, it's not enough for us to just to play it here on the snare drum, between the snare and the kick. We want to really make this a, a fluid part of our playing. So the easiest way to do this is to get it out to the rest of the drums as quick as possible. And I always teach that because if we lock ourselves into playing on one sound source, what we do is we train our muscles and our ear and our eyes and our, our everything kind of to feel it one way. And then when we go to try it some other way by moving our hands to different drums or cymbals, suddenly there's a disconnect and it's like learning the pattern all over again. So what we need to do is from the get-go, get our hands out there, moving around the drums. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on uh, the, the metronome again on uh, 120 or 60 BPM. And I'm going to kind of work it around the drums, just show you some ways that I like to play this fill across the kit. So it's pretty fun. There's a lot of possibility there. Uh, one thing I'll mention too is that I like to put a double kick on the end of the last sticking pattern, the last time I'm playing the pattern. So what I mean by that is I'm going to go right, left, right, left, left, kick, kick. And that last, the last kick I'm playing is going to be the downbeat. Right? Just like that. Adding that double kick is a really effective way to button up your drum fill phrases and bring you back home. It makes it really clear for you with your coordination, but it also makes it really clear for the rest of the band. They're like, oh, okay, he's done with his drum fill, or she's done with her drum fill, right? You don't want to be kind of leaving them in the lurch, like, oh, where's the end of that drum fill and where's count one? Really, it's, it's good if we can mark that time. So um, certainly not every time, but I think it's really effective most of the time. So definitely you know, try, to, try that out. Try adding that, that double kick at the end of the phrase to get you back into the groove. Now, let's connect the two together. This is the most important part. We got to be able to play that groove, go to the fill, and come back to the groove. So let me demonstrate first for you. And then we'll kind of talk more about what I'm doing and how I'm connecting the two and going back and forth. All right, check it out. One, two, a one, two, a three, four.
All right, so I gave you a couple of examples there. The first one was just with the four measure phrase and doing the fill over that fourth measure. So three measures of groove, one measure of fill. The second one was kind of like trading fours with myself where I played four measures of groove and then four measures of the fill. Now, the reason I want you to get it out to the drums as quickly as possible, other than just coordination, is that I want you to start thinking melodically on the drums. I want you to get away from thinking about things like static drum licks. And a drum lick is where we take a sticking pattern and we play it exactly the same way across the drum kit every time we play it. In jazz, that's not going to work uh, because jazz is flexible, right? And jazz is interactive and conversational. And so we want to be able to interact with the conversation. And if we back ourselves into the corner when we're learning this, by only being able to play it one way across the drum kit, it's not going to help us really to play the music we want to play. So I really encourage you, right from the get-go, get your hands out there and just try to come up with as many different ideas and patterns as you can that, that sound good to you uh, and, you know, kind of work it into your playing. Now you notice that when I was finished with my pattern, I always did that double kick, right? And that brought me right back home. So I've also written that out for you, kind of a variation of that, just to show you what that looks like in notation. Uh, but use your ears, use your eyes, see what I'm doing. And you could even kind of slow this video down if you need to, right? And you can check, kind of check it out. But the idea here is I am really connecting back to the groove. Now when I'm going into the fill, uh, what I like to do is leave the bass drum where it is in the pattern, but take out the ride, right hand from the ride cymbal and instead get it moved over to wherever I'm going to start the pattern. That's going to be the snare drum or a tom-tom. And that gives me that little extra time I need to kind of get myself set up. Let me demonstrate it for you. So you kind of get it, see how I'm connecting it, all right? So this is really important stuff, and this is really gonna be helpful, I think, as you practice this. So I encourage you to do it exactly as I'm doing it. You can certainly change it the way you want to do it later, no problem, but you know, it's good to kind of get the mechanics of it down first. So if you haven't checked out my Jazz Drum Comping Mini course or my Jazz Drum Fills course, I encourage you to do it. They're gonna make your drumming so much more powerful and so much more musical. You're really going to be able to play what you want to play on the drums. All right. Thanks so much again for being on my email list and staying connected. And keep swinging, my friend.